celebration of the Lord's Eucharist, the entering into that mystery of his power, the one that's hidden under a very simple and a very everyday exterior, again, but with that great grace in, in, um, within it. So we call to mind our prayers and intentions. We take a moment as we call to mind our sins to help prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> reading is a reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, 
Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, Lord, I see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits, our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ, I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Amen. Saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most memorable, I think, youth ministry games that I remember playing in youth group one time and a couple parishes ago was uh, called The One True Voice, was what they called this game. And how it worked was that you had one student who was blindfolded, and then all the other students had to um, give directions. But only one person was giving the correct directions. You had to find some object or to sit in a chair or whatever it was. So only one of the students, you know, the other youth group kids, was actually telling them the real place they should go and what they should do. And everybody else was trying to give false information. You know, so this person was mindful that they had to try and pick out and decide what was the true voice. You know, what was the person that was actually giving them the advice to get where they needed to go. I mentioned that game before maybe, but I don't know, it might have been a couple years ago. If You get points if you remember me mentioning this before. <laughs> But it's one that comes to mind, of course, with these readings, especially this first reading in this gospel. Peter standing on the sea, you're walking on the water, but then getting distracted by the power of the wind and the rain and the storm. Elijah in the first reading, waiting for the Lord. You know, there's the wind and the earthquake and the fire, but waiting for that small whispering voice that was actually the Lord speaking to him. That both of them, I think, identify something that's true with life, that that game is a very accurate portrayal of life. It's a very accurate realization that there's not kind of a yellow brick road that just winds through life that shows us where to go. There's not like a dotted line or something that we can just follow and that explains what's going on and what we should do and what the best options are and what, what are our best choices. That it's about discernment. Discernment is the word that we use. It uh, means sifting. Sifting through all those voices, sifting through all those fears, sifting through all those desires, and defining that truth. We actually had the saint who's best known for teaching about discernment was Ignatius Loyola, whose feast day was July 31st. But he wrote about that, sifting through the way he described it, three voices. The Holy Spirit, you know, what we're seeking to find, the human spirit, and the evil spirit, the enemy spirit. That we have all these different voices that speak within us, and even our own self. You know, it's not as if we have one unified thing that we want in a sense. Generally, we have many things we either want or we want to avoid for different reasons. That it's in prayer, you know, that Jesus begins this gospel up on the mountain by himself to pray. And it's from prayer that he then enters into the storm uh, with, you know, kind of this peace and perseverance, you know, this power that, of course, he has in his divine nature but that in his human nature gives an example for us, inviting Peter to follow the same path, to be able to walk through that. So that for us, again, that we often, our prayer maybe goes something like, Lord, make the storm stop. <laughs> Lord, make the wind go away. Lord, make the, the challenges uh, disappear in my life. But that part of the, the message of the gospel is that his grace is enough for us. His strength and his power are not for us to get out of the storm, in a sense, or to not have to go walk through it, but to be able to go through it, to be able in our own life, and then to be able to encounter others that are caught in the storm, and to bring the grace of God to them. St. Paul, in our second reading, that great desire he has, talking about how much he desires to share the grace and the relationship that he's found in Christ, in his faith. That we need this, you know, our, our prayer, our study, you know, I think as we learn, especially read the saints, you know, the writings of the, the apostles, the, descent, the, the um, successors of the apostles, and the scriptures, and those who, you know, give us those um, profound interpretations of them, those understandings of, of the deeper significance of them, that these are the things that we need, and that it's not something that's disconnected from action. It's not as if there's this, uh, sometimes we think maybe this battle, either we're you know, out working or we're praying or we're living an active life or contemplative, contemplative life, but they're joined together. Another saint to mention is the saint today, Saint Dominic, especially uh, significant to us because Dominican sisters have taught in Ray Tool at uh, St. Malachi School since the school was founded. But the Dominicans are named after, well, he didn't name them after himself, but Saint Dominic named them the Order of Preachers. But uh, he was known for this, you know, this, that deep blend in his life that deep blend of action and prayer. St. Francis of Assisi, so many other examples. 
But again, coming back to this question of discernment, coming back to getting that image of the storm, that image of all the different voices, to be able to start identifying, you know, what is that voice that's speaking? Is that really the Holy Spirit? Is it fear? Is it temptation? You know, is it some other aspect, somebody else, the expectations of others upon us? Um, to be able to be able to uh, know what it is that the Lord is asking of us, that he gives us the grace. His grace is sufficient for us. He is already walking through the storm. He's already there with us. That he invites us to keep our eyes on him, as Peter did, uh, did in the beginning of his walk on the water, to turn to him. You know, another great way for that clarity of the sacrament of reconciliation, one of the challenges of the limitations of the celebration of it, just to mention that, um, we are beginning now um, at St. Elizabeth to have confessions in the side room here before Mass. So um, this Tuesday we won't have it because Tuesday will be a communion service. Um, I'll be out of town um, on Tuesday, but starting Saturday, well, with Saturday and then the Tuesday after that, we'll have confessions at our normal time before Masses. We'll still have occasionally outdoor confessions at St. Malachi and working towards setting up something indoor um, when we're possible there. But again, these different resources that the Lord gives us. What are the voices speaking to us? How can we discern the Lord's voice? How can we name those ways? How can we better learn to hear the Lord's voice as he guides us in the storm? Please stand. I invite you to join me as we profess our faith in our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from God made, God substantial in the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and in for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. For I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. For I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In the same spirit of faith, let us raise our prayers and petition. For church leaders, ordained and lay, for a spirit of reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this nation and every nation, for progress toward peace through justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the working poor, the elderly, and the homeless, for a living wage, good medical care, and a safe environment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have lost a loved one, for children who have lost parents, for husbands and wives who have lost their spouses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all here present at the Lord's table, and for all who cannot be here because of age or illness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the intentions written in our parish book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living and deceased, for vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, and for the special intentions of Jolene Home, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the protection of the church here and throughout the world, let us pray in the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you and we humbly pray. 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink them. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, St. Malachi, St. Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, Louis his brother Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit.
May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord. Infirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As mentioned, this Tuesday will be a communion service. Then beginning with Saturday, well, I should say Saturday, and then the next, beginning of the next Tuesday, we'll have our confessions as mentioned at the special uh, way, but in our regular times. And keep an eye as we'll kind of be getting closer to the some of the new things with the start of the school year and everything with that. Please keep that whole process in your prayers. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Our recessional hymn is holy, holy, holy. <laughs>